So uh, I'm not an engineer, but I am a food specialist and I've been uh, in the restaurant industry for about 17 years. And uh, I have been an entrepreneur that has started restaurant chains uh, and expanded them across the country, across many countries. And every time I've taken over a restaurant chain concept, I get into the heart of the business. And what that really means is how do I make the kitchens more optimized? How do I make them smaller food, more consistent, less wastage, uh, better equipment, uh, less talented employees and fewer employees. And over the last few years, this is before COVID, we started recognizing that uh, there's a big problem that uh, we've been facing in terms of staff availability. It wasn't about quality of staff, it was just human beings not showing up to work. And restaurants, including in Canada, starting with Calgary during the oil boom, were shutting down because nobody wanted to work uh, in a restaurant. There was better ways of making money. Uh, so that put us in a bit of a conundrum, like what do we do? Uh, I did, uh, given my background in the food space and being an angel investor in food tech startups, I tried to find companies that uh, could help us in one of my projects where I wanted to automate a certain uh, uh, component of our kitchen and bring in robotics. Uh, we couldn't find anything commercially available that could help us. So we took matters into our own hands. And uh, I came across a fellow called Brian Walker. And Brian's been in the robotics industry at Magna International for over 20 years. And he understands this as an engineer better than most people do. So I had approached Brian to create something for my personal problems uh, in the kitchen. And as we went down the rabbit hole, we ended up creating something pretty special. So just to zoom out and see what we're trying to do here, uh, you know, we all recognize, and I'm sure all of you have, uh, we've been chowing down food at home and using delivery companies and increasingly not cooking at home. And the global functional food market uh, is uh, uh, is you know touching upon a trillion dollars worldwide. And the same trends are happening in every country across the world. Uh, but the disconnect is that while there's a lot of demand for food and the delivery companies have successful IPOs and while not making money are worth billions, the restaurants were struggling to survive on a good day. You add in a big delivery charge, it's impossible for, for restaurants to actually deliver that uh, in a profitable way. And come COVID, uh, some of those stock realities became obvious. So without a lot of governmental support, uh, it was difficult for restaurants to survive. And after everything is gone and done, the whole model is, I think, on shaky ground. I always say that uh, uh, we've been feeling it in our bones in the industry that something is off. It's not sustainable. Labor is not coming back. And there's a few reasons we think why labor isn't coming back. Uh, you know, the reason why restaurants have a very short, small margin is because a big percentage is occupancy costs and labor costs, and not just the quality of labor, just the availability of labor increasingly. And we've been seeing this in a pretty dangerous way. So like I said, we can feel it in our bones. This is not sustainable. And there's a very clear answer for that. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, the, the employees in a typical fast food restaurant would be the young kids. All those kids are starting Facebook now in their parents' basement or there were people on a certain socioeconomic ladder. Uh, they didn't have a choice, so they go work in a fast food restaurant. Uh, those people have better choices now. They can be driving Uber cars, delivering Amazon, working at an Amazon warehouse. So the most uh, hardest job to fill is also the least desirable job. And when people have options, they will never come to it. So in the long run, we need to find a solution for functional food. And I'm not talking about high-end restaurants or casual dining with friends and family in celebration, just grabbing a quick meal from a fast food restaurant for your lunch at work or while driving a car or uh, simply having it delivered to your house. Uh, the solution, of course, is robotics yeah, and automation. Sorry, uh, uh, we all understand sorry. that's cool and interesting. But, you know, to make this work on a restaurant level and hospitality level, it needs to do high volume at high speed. It needs to be customizable and really duplicate, if not exceed, the expectation of a customer from a human uh, chef uh, kitchen. Uh, our initial sorry, focus, and based on my background in dealing with numerous uh, cuisine types, we decided to focus on Asian cuisine. A uh, couple of reasons for that. Number one was uh, uh, before Uber Eats came into our lives, I think most of us, the only thing we got, ever got delivered at home was Chinese food and pizza. And the reason was because these foods are actually affordable and they're optimized in terms of food costs for delivery. Uh, and secondly, they hold really well. So if it takes half an hour, 45 minutes to get to your food, you know, it's still in a pretty good state, unlike, you know, for example, deep fried food. So we said, okay, this is kind of good. The other interesting thing is the whole uh, premise of how a walk operates. A traditional wok, I think it's one of the most versatile pieces of uh, cooking equipment ever invented. You know, at 400 degrees carbon fiber, when you toss food, it kind of bathes in its own vapors and then hits the carbon seal at 400 degrees, lightly caramelizes and makes your meat-to-order meal in seconds, not minutes. 
And then the wok right there and then can be cleaned with high pressure water and get ready for the next cooking cycle. So we took all the elements of wok cooking and created what we called ROWOK, a robotic wok kitchen. Uh, to quickly make you understand how the process is broken down, there's basically three critical, critical components. Uh, the top one is the refrigerated part of a raw wok. This is where all the produce, all uh, the, the protein, the chicken, the shrimp, whatever you want, is stored there. So it's, it's properly calibrated and dispenses the right amount of material that every recipe calls for. Uh, once a recipe is programmed and people customize the dishes, the correct volume of ingredients falls in and goes into the second area, the collector area. This is where food gets manipulated. It goes to a steam tunnel to bring it uh, to uh, a high heat temperature and eventually it gets dropped into a robotic wok system where it cooks pretty much in a similar uh, uh, premise as a, as a regular wok where it spins and rotates, deposits the food into a bowl, gets into a cleaning cycle and gets back into the cooking cycle. So our equipment actually has six uh, robotic woks working concurrently that allows us to really have a high throughput. So in the end, this is kind of a quick description of how the internal uh, mechanism works in a graphical way. This I think is easy for me to explain. Of course, the shop drawings, engineering drawings are a bit different than this. And we haven't shown that to too many people besides our investors because we haven't finished filing all the patents. But this diagrammatic representation tells you exactly what's going on on the inside. On the inside, it looks like a pretty smart looking restaurant. Uh, and given the flexibility of the design, and we took inspiration from food trucks and RVs, uh, this can pretty much be placed in any real estate. It's a self-contained unit with its plumbing and HVAC systems designed and allows us to pretty much go anywhere we want for 24 seven service and airports, office, towers, gas station, you name it. Uh, we're actually doing an exclusivity, one of the largest airport concessioners in the US. Uh, so we will be starting out the rollout of this machine um, uh, in, in the US before we do so in Canada. Uh, the restaurant is really optimized for, for artificial intelligence and, and for data science uh, in both inventory management and for marketing purposes. You know, for example, if chicken's running out, uh, expiring, sorry, in, in 24 hours, it'll generate a promotion 50% off your pad time. Uh, the inventory management is pretty effective with food traceability, so we know exactly what's going on. We know what's selling in certain areas. We also know what's happening in the environment. So sometimes the sales in a restaurant goes up because it's a concert next door or lots of delivery happening because there's a game on TV. Uh, and sometimes uh, things are not that busy because of holidays, because of construction. And managing your inventory and your data allows you to be pretty effective and in and, and, and full control. Nip, uh, did, did you want to share your slides there? While we, we love see your the, slides. Uh, robotic and automation engineering, end of the day, we're not in the business of selling robots. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a demand there is, uh, but we're in the business of selling food. So we position ourselves as a restaurant concept. We just happen to be fully automated on the inside. Uh, it's also a pretty cool uh, uh, model for us in terms of monetization. So from our perspective, we're a restaurant brand and we have multiple revenue streams, just like any franchise or would. Uh, from a franchisee perspective, uh, Apples to apples, this restaurant would cost about a quarter compared to a traditional quick service restaurant. It would have zero on-site employees, and the job of the operator would be pretty much two hours of maintenance and refilling the ingredient silos. So that's how we position ourselves as both uh, a franchise restaurant company selling delicious uh, meat-to-order food uh, and a very dignified and fantastic sort of a job for a franchisee on the other side with no uh, headaches for employee management. The other thing that's interesting is because as I previously mentioned, we don't have the occupancy and labor cost of a typical restaurant. We can technically really play a price game to dominate the market. We can sell food lower than the uh, break-even cost of a typical quick service restaurant and make a higher profit margin, giving us a lot of dependency uh, in, in terms of uh, versatility and market share. Uh, end of the day, in a typical restaurant, food costs is 25 to 30%. Everything else is on top. Uh, not to mention the big bank loans restaurants take uh, to operate the business and pay high rents and busy areas. So if you remove all the ugliness from the from the equation, uh, there's a real value element for from a consumer perspective. Uh, you know, we we take inspiration in some of the better uh, restaurant brands that have uh, been born in the in the zeitgeist. Uh, Sweet Queen to the message of sustainability. Shake Shack, a modern brand with a good story expanding worldwide. And we also like a company called Reef. They're not technically a restaurant company, but they repurpose 
uh, shipping containers and turn them into cloud kitchens and they can be placed in any parking lot. So we have that in common with them in terms of uh, real estate flexibility. But unlike most of these people, we don't depend on humans to actually cook our food. Uh, you know, again, we started this company not because we had any intention of being in a tech startup universe. We did so because everything in the market was kind of lousy. Uh, there was lots of robotic hands and simpli simplistic designs. What we did was uh, we didn't look at uh, emulating the movement of a human hand. We instead uh, looked at this as we have raw materials, we have a finished product, how do we go from A to B? Uh, so the engineers on our team, there's 20 full-time engineers uh, working on it. But they also are experts in food robotics and automation for large-scale manufacturing. That means we needed to understand all the details and the regulations required for equipment certification, electrical certification, HVAC requirements, plumbing. Uh, you can't just produce something and then and then hope you can just go into market. You need to have those, those uh, certifications in place uh, prior. Uh, so having a team of experts that does it for the pharmaceutical industry, does it for the large-scale food manufacturing, uh, we basically uh, created a mini food factory uh, that works on positions of uh, high precision uh, automation, uh, manufacturing food, uh, and robotics. Uh, so our, our quote-unquote competition uh, in the robotic space anyways, I think they're all out of business or being sold uh, for uh, minimal valuation because I think the premise for them was take a robotic arm and move lettuce 12, 12 inches. Ours was to make a complete food and an autonomous solution. So there's a few people like us, I think in market that are doing quite well. Uh, we're quite advanced in terms of uh, where we are as a company. Uh, where we are as a company is that our robotic solution is uh, about two weeks from completion. And we have a demo day and on December 7th uh, that will uh, be live. Uh, our second round of investors and our uh, partners for expansion will be there and they'll all get to see the machine in action. They'll all get to taste the food. Uh, the other critical element for our engineering team was to really focus on the carbon neutrality of it, the materials that we use, not just in terms of bowl and food, but also for the materials on the machine, the energy consumption, the water consumption, uh, we are also going to be a carbon neutral restaurant. So uh, we raised our seed rounds, uh, seed round of financing earlier this year. Uh, we have completed our demo and now we're gonna have a pre-commercial unit uh, live for everybody to see in about three weeks, or no, sorry, four weeks, December 7th. And, uh, and we hope to be uh, commercial in market by Q1 next year. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, uh, SJW Robotics. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for that. Um, I don't, uh, I think I tried to jump in there a couple of times there. We, we didn't actually see your presentation uh, while we were talking through that. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. That sucks. Yeah, that's why I, I yeah I I tried to jump in there, mate, but uh, I'm not sure if there was some some we're having some some audio problems. Uh, maybe if you want to show us some of the slides now and, and take a minute to to kind of talk through those. Can you see? Yeah, that? there we go. Yeah, okay. we can now. We can. So that's what the machine looks like in the end. Uh, I was showing the raw version of the machine what's inside the hood uh, in terms of where the food is stored, uh, manipulated, and and cooked. Uh, you know, taking inspiration from walkways cooking. Uh, I was talking about uh, the urgency in the talent pool available and you know, creating a solution that is versatile in any real estate and very tech forward. So I think, yeah, well, this is probably the most important one to see. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. But this is what is coming out on December 7th. That's awesome. I, I wish you the, the best of luck. And I think so many places that I could see one of these robots. Uh, and I suppose at is, it's a kind of like, a. would you position this as a, as a, um, a robot is, is there some type of, uh, verbiage that you would, would prefer to kind of align the product with? I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you mentioned, uh, I mean, is this, how would you kind of, what would you call this a, a food processing robot at what, what would kind of be the actual phrase that you use? Well, we call it an autonomous cooking system. Autonomous cooking system. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And S SJW, what, what does that stand for exactly? Oh, it's the three founders. It's uh, Sharma, Jutris, and Walker. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice one. Way to go. Uh, fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me there. Uh, so we've got a question here. Uh, Frank has asked, could you make the system mobile as in a food truck? That's a great question. Oh, very good question. Um, actually, that is the model we 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 uh, designed it after. If you look at the food truck, it's a pretty uh, a small food truck is a pretty 
versatile, autonomous, self-contained HVAC plumbing system. So that's what we used in its initial design. And the other interesting thing about this is uh, it can be put on wheels and dragged anywhere. So we could be in a location that is not high traffic and we decide that we want to move it. We don't have to break anything apart. We just push it to the next location. So uh, it's bang on in terms of our real estate flexibility. Last one. Way to go there. Well, look, we'll certainly leave it open if, if we have any other questions from the audience. I was having a look on, on SJW as well um, on uh, on LinkedIn. You said you have uh, 20, 20 people working for you guys. Are you kind of in, in stealth mode at the moment? Uh, yeah, we've been in kind of stealth mode uh, uh, for a while. Uh, we raised our financing. We completed the raise in June, and uh, we're getting ready for our seed round financing next uh, December. Uh, we we also have a manufacturing partner that uh, that we commissioned to build the product. They're also investors in the company, and we besides some of the key investors, we've kept that relationship also confidential. And all that will be released in on December seventh when we go live with the presentation.